All of us, children and grown-ups, size up others and with the jobs to be done. Every day, each one of us comes in contact with many different kinds of people. We observe them, react to them. We make judgments about them. They make judgments about us. This girl is really attractive. He's certainly pretty sure of himself. Her recommendations are good. I think she'll fit in okay. If she's interested in the salary we can offer, I'll hire her. I'm glad we found Dr. Webster. We think he's the best pediatrician in town. He's certainly done wonders for Janie's allergy. Our evaluations of others are usually informal, but some situations require objective, systematic assessment of abilities or aptitudes. In the classroom, informal evaluations are useful but the teacher also needs more reliable assessments of each child's abilities and achievements to help her adapt her teaching to each particular group of students. This eighth grade class in the year ahead faces subject matter more varied and complex than they have had before. The nature of the work they will be expected to do will put increased demands on their ability to read. Miss Wilcox wonders, is the class vocabulary reading each child? Which of them will require special help in developing the skills he will need? Her observations and classroom quizzes over a period of time would give her some clues. But now, at the beginning of the year, is the time when such information is most useful to her. Students' permanent cumulative records are helpful. They contain a history of each child's progress in school, including the results of standardized tests. The ability of this class to use reading as a learning tool at the eighth grade level has not been assessed. A standardized test used under controlled conditions can help Miss Wilcox identify students with reading problems and indicate students who may need additional testing for a more thorough diagnosis of reading difficulties. A number of tests are available to her. Miss Wilcox must choose from them the one test which will best meet her objectives. As a first step in selection, Miss Wilcox defines her objective in testing. Just what is it that she needs to know about her student's reading ability? Then she can go on to examination of the test itself. Does the cost fit the school budget? Can she give the test conveniently in the 50-minute class period? Can she score the test by hand and by herself? No special equipment or outside help will be available to her. Are equivalent forms available in case retesting is needed? Technical considerations are important to intelligent selection and use of tests. Of these, the most important are reliability, validity, and the norming group. How accurate is the measurement? We can measure John's height with a variety of devices. Some are more accurate than others. We must also be aware that there are possible errors in the various tests that we use in the classroom. 
Reliability refers to the accuracy of the measurement. John is the tallest student in his class. Will he also be found to be the brightest student? Let's look at their grade averages. Measurement of height cannot be used to make a valid prediction of success as a student. This can be done only with an instrument which is valid for the purpose of measuring scholastic aptitude. In considering validity, it is necessary to ask whether the test actually measures what it professes to measure. The norming group is a comparison group. It is the basis for interpreting test scores. Say that a particular test has been standardized on a group of students predominantly urban, low income, foreign population, male. The group of students to be tested is suburban, middle income level, with Anglo-Saxon background, and with boys and girls equally represented. A test with such a norming group would not be suitable for use with this group of students, since the two should have comparable characteristics. These technical considerations affect the usefulness of an instrument for particular groups of students. Acceptable criteria for reliability, validity, and norm groups must be applied in test selection. It is to the teacher's advantage to secure professional advice whenever possible. However, a teacher does not have to be a measurement specialist to put these criteria to use in selecting an appropriate test. Each standardized test is accompanied by a manual giving detailed information about the test. Reviews of tests and reports on their use are printed in professional journals and bulletins. An excellent source of professional critiques of individual tests is Burroughs' Mental Measurement Yearbook. With these aids to selection, Miss Wilcox chooses the test which will best indicate each student's ability to handle the increased demands on his reading skills. Before giving the test, Miss Wilcox studies the directions in the manual to be sure she understands them. It is essential to follow the standard procedure. Miss Wilcox takes the test herself in order to become thoroughly familiar with it. She allows herself exactly the time specified. Test taking may also be used as a step in choosing a test. In announcing the test, Miss Wilcox tries to calm any fears her class may have about test taking. You know, this year, you're going to be doing more reading than you've ever had to do before. And you're going to be reading for different purposes, too, because you'll be doing independent research and individual projects. This year, we're going to be studying Western civilization, and you will be using reference books and all kinds of resources. Well, naturally, this, isn't going to be, this is going to be more difficult for some of you than for others. It would be very helpful to us if we knew what kind of help each of you is going to need. So in order to learn more about that, I plan to give you a test, which has been used for exactly this same purpose by many other eighth grade classes similar to ours. Students should understand the purpose of testing and the nature of the test. What should we study to get ready for this test? Well, George, this really isn't the kind of a test that you can study for. And you'll not be graded on it in the same way as you are on our regular class tests and quizzes. Your scores will be used to help us plan this year's work, not to find out if someone is passing or failing. What kind of questions are you going to ask us? All of the questions are objective questions. This is a printed test. But we'll talk more about that just before you take it. I plan to give it tomorrow during our regular class period, 
So it's very important that you all be here. You'll need to bring with you to class a good sharp pencil. But I'll have the other things that you need. <laughs> Next day, everything is ready and waiting before the students arrive. Room comfort is provided for. Seats are spaced apart. Any distraction that might affect test results should be eliminated. Please print your name on the line at the left side of the answer sheet. Then fill in the other items of information that are called for. Read the directions on both the answer sheet and the cover of the booklet. But do not write on the booklet and do not open the booklet to the test itself until I tell you to do so. In taking this test, you... Miss Wilcox follows the directions in the test manual to the letter to ensure that the test is given under standard conditions. She answers the students' questions now, since according to the directions, no questions may be asked after the test begins. Let me show you on the board. Here are five pairs of lines. If you think the third She makes certain that everyone understands how to mark the answer sheets. Do you understand? Are there any other questions? Remember, you are not expected to answer all the questions in any part within the time limit. But if you should finish before time is called, go on to the next part. If you finish the last part before time is called, you may go back and work on any earlier part. Do not start until I tell you to begin. Miss Wilcox allows exactly the time specified for the test. Ready? Draw scores are next converted to scaled scores. Scaled scores are an aid to interpretation of test results. They put this class and the national norm group on a common scale and make it possible to perform various arithmetic computations which are necessary in interpretation. You scaled scores, Miss Wilcox ranks her class in order, first for vocabulary. 
She determines the range of scores from highest to lowest. She identifies the median score. The number of students who scored above this point is equal to the number who scored below it. She also determines the mean score, the arithmetic average of all scores. Converting scale scores to percentile ranks following directions given in the manual makes it possible for Miss Wilcox to compare her class with the norm group. Alfred's score is 43. He has a percentile rank of 66. This means that he did better on the test than 66% of the students in the norm group. Other tests may use different ways of converting and using scores. Grade equivalents are sometimes used. A relatively high score for a seventh grade student may be a relatively low score for an eighth grade student. Scores can be charted graphically to show their distribution. Most of the scores are grouped around the mean with fewer scores toward the high and low ends. Scores of a single small class would not show a smooth distribution and may not show a normal distribution. If Miss Wilcox could test and chart enough cases, the curve would smooth out into a normal distribution. If the distribution had looked like this, Miss Wilcox would know that for some reason this test was not suitable for her group. It might have been too easy, or she might have a large number of superior students in comparison to the norm group. A distribution like this might indicate too difficult a test or an unusually large number of slow students. Miss Wilcox can determine where her class stands in relation to eighth grade classes in general by comparing them to the national distribution. The norm is a reference point for comparison, not a standard of performance. Local norms can be built up over a period of time as groups of students are given the same test. This offers greater assurance that the class is being compared to a really comparable group. Comparing the class to the group from which it is drawn allows it, in effect, to be compared to itself. Each of these individual scores really represents a possible range of scores, since it is not possible to eliminate all sources of error in the test and in the testing procedure. The standard error for this test is stated in the manual to be three. With a score of 47 and a standard error of three, we would be correct two thirds of the time in saying that the student's true score falls between 44 and 50. From the test results, Miss Wilcox expects that this group of students, a large part of the class, will have no particular difficulty with regular classwork. Even so, as she works with these students through the year, Miss Wilcox will be alert to catch any reading problems that may appear. This group can be expected to handle more advanced reading material and independent projects. Superior students deserve special provisions for work that will challenge them, but even the superior student may require help in developing particular reading skills. In the low-scoring group, a variety of factors leading to a low score may be at work. Charles scored low, but on the basis of his recorded past performance and scholastic aptitude, Miss Wilcox feels that this is about what he could be expected to achieve. She helps him find reading material that is suited to his capacity, age, and level of maturity. Like all students, Charles needs a satisfactory school experience and incentive to develop up to his potential. Helen scored high on vocabulary and low on reading comprehension. Additional testing is indicated to locate possible causes and help Miss Wilcox plan remedial work for her. Observations of John in class and information about him in his cumulative record suggest that his poor reading performance may be due to problems outside the classroom. Miss Wilcox feels that he needs more concentrated assistance than she can give. 
she refers John to the school guidance counselor for specialized attention and help. Miss Wilcox keeps a record of her students' scores for her own use and guidance through the coming school year. Test results are also entered in each student's record for use by other school personnel. Careful selection, interpretation, and use of a suitable standardized test has made it possible for Miss Wilcox to assess each of her students' ability to use reading as a learning tool. The knowledge she has gained makes it possible for her to tailor the instructional program to fit the students. The standardized test is a technical tool which every teacher should understand and be competent to use. Thank you.